So um, today we're making a reflection text, right? Using an image as a background from uh, scottsloan.com. And we're using the text here, the word purity being reflected in this water. And what we'll be doing is gathering the elements that we need in order to create this. Now, one of the elements, the primary one, is basically the background here. Now, in this particular video, you're going to be looking at um, using smart objects and smart filters in order to kind of tweak the elements that you need to with maximum um, ability to repeat or fix or non-destructive editing. So let's actually get started. First things first, you want to open the image. Um, so file, I'm going to create a new document. And because I want to work with my screen size, which is 1920 by 1080, right, press OK. Now one of the things to note about the image, the original image of this thing here, the, the Scott Sloan thing. So let's go back to our downloads and we have the image here somewhere ing where are we ah so it's here All right original image for it and just look for the image online uh, is 2560 by 1707 you can simply copy the image just right click and choose copy and inside Photoshop, you can go edit and paste. Hmm. So the actual original image is actually much larger than the scene that we have. I'm going to just scale that in by using the free transform tool, which is Control T. And just so you can see where the controls are, um, if I zoom out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just shrink this in like so. I'm holding Shift to maintain the proportions. And I'm going to get something looking a little bit more like this. Now it's going to be slightly cropped, but that is okay. And we have essentially the image we want. Now, one of the other things you could have done is to convert this to a smart object and hence maintain the color, the values, and the additional data that's inside the image before you shrink it. And when you shrink it, it would still maintain that data. So I'll just redo that now so you can see how that's done. So original image, still really large. What I'll do is just right click and choose convert to smart object. Now the smart object keeps all the data inside and so it's going to use this to scale in the object. Now if you want to scale from the or scale towards what we call this the anchor point you have to hold shift and alt and it scales in from or scales towards that anchor point there. I'm using my arrow keys to move. Hmm? Control T and then Shift Alt in order to scale it in. So that's how you do that. So keep watching. All right, so here's what we need to do. We need to get this thing here to have this text and we want it reflected. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just, we have the colors here. Now, my image doesn't look quite as bright as this one. And you can see here that perhaps, maybe, there might have been some additional saturation we can add to our image. But first of all, let's deal with the reflection. It's a very simple technique. Simply, you're going to just choose a text tool, which the shortcut is T. And I'll use a font. There's one that I like called Bebas. It's a very bold font, a very a decent font for displays. So I'll just type it in here, B-E-B-A-S. You can always download this font off fontsquirrel.com. Uh, and then I'll just change the text color to white and press OK. With that done, I am going to just maintain my center alignment for my text. Make sure you see that uh, option there in the properties panel at the top. And just click, and I'm just going to add a word. Reflect. Right. So I have the word reflect there. And let me just quickly look at something here. I'm just going to highlight my text. And you'll notice on the right side, if you're not seeing your character panel, just hit window and choose character. If it's not there, just hit that again and it should show up. It shows you the properties of this particular text here. Now it has auto in terms of the leading, 
but the width is 76 percent i'm going to set that to 100 percent because you want to just maintain the proper proper proportions for the um thing here and let's also scale that down just a smidge so that's 72 maybe i'll just work with 72 All right so that's the word reflect and I want to add a few styles to this because it looks kind of boring in just white. So what I'll do is I have layer styles I can use for the text and any other layer that I want to. But for now, hit FX and choose gradient overlay. And for the gradient, we have by default white to black. And you can see it here in the gradient panel. Simply hit that little gradient panel. And click on the black part and we're going to just make it take on the color of perhaps the water just slightly reflected and just increase the lightness or the brightness so it has a more bluish look right so when it actually reflects you get something a little bit more interesting and you just press ok and press ok and press ok now this text is actually finished but there's something else I want to do with this text I would like to convert this to a smart object and I'm going to show you why. So right click on the text, convert to smart object and now it has everything inside of it. If I want to edit this text now, I can't normally edit it by default. Right? The reason why you can't edit it as a text anymore is because it's now a smart object. But if you do want to edit what's written on the text, simply double click on the thumbnail, you get this thing showing up and you press OK. And if you want to change the text, you can always change the text. Probably not reflect, but deflect. Press OK, and you save. And when you close that, it's updated here. Now here's the interesting part. Uh, to get the reflection, what we're going to do is simply this. Let's duplicate the font. All right, so right click the word reflect here, or the text layer that has been converted to a smart object, and just choose Duplicate. Once you hit duplicate, it's going to give you an option to call it something else. I'll just call it reflect and two and press OK. After which, we're going to transform this. Very simply, just press Control T, Command T if you're using a Mac, and right click and choose flip vertical. What that's going to do is just flip it on the vertical axis. And we're just going to use our arrow keys while holding Shift to just move it down until eventually it comes to here right like so now we're not quite finished yet because although it's basically just the text flipped upside down we want to look like it's in the water and the best way to do that is by using something we've used before which is masking so i'm going to hit the mask button once you've selected the reflection layer which is this one and hit the Add new layer mask right next thing I need to do is using a gradient tool I remember the way the mask works it, it deals with visibility so white would give you full visibility black gives you no visibility of that particular layer so here's what I want to do I want to make it show up more closely towards the surface of the water and disappear as it begins to fade into the depths so my current colors are white and black and it shows you an example of what your gradient is going to look like when you drag and just make sure your layer mask is selected just start off somewhere about here and just hold shift to get it to snap to one of these 45 degree angles and just release and you get something like that now the problem i have here it didn't do it properly because my gradient is actually a radial gradient and we actually want to be a reflective, um, a linear gradient, sorry. So let's try that again. Click, hold shift, and move it down. Once you've done that, you get something looking more like this. But there's one more thing I'd like to add to this. And we kind of want to, to sort of blur out as it goes down even further. And here's how we do that. Because we're using a smart object, we have the option of creating a smart filter. So when you hit filter this time and you choose blur and we're going to choose Gaussian blur, right? What's going to happen is that it's going to give you a full, a full um, reflection and you can change the radius. Less radius means it's going to be less blurry. The higher the radius is going to be more blurry. 
So last time I read it's about 16 here or 14 or whatever you want to, probably 15 might be a more rounded number. And just press OK. Now that does what it does. What we need to do now is get it to mask out this properly. So you can actually change the visibility of your smart filters as well. So just like you have a layer mask that would have been white by default, you actually also have a smart filters effect mask. So what I'm going to do, same thing again, using the same gradient tool, I'm going to set this to white and this to black. And do something like this. We want to go the other way around, so we're going to reverse this gradient. So if you hit reverse, it flips the gradient. And we start off from here and just reflect about here. And you get it starting out very crisp and then eventually fading out into the nothingness. And that's how you create a simple reflection. Right? And that's how that works. Hopefully you learned something. Have an ice day. Oh, and one more thing. If you find that your image is just too little in terms of its saturation and its color, you can always add an adjustment layer just down here. So you click that and you choose hue slash saturation and you can increase the saturation of all the things in there, making it a little bit more brightly green. Right? If you can't see the difference, I'll just hide the visibility. So you can actually see that there is some more colors in that. So I think that's about it for this video. Take time to practice and have a nice day.